Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi! Bad bitch Beatrice. Bad bitch B. We are here to talk Sister Wives Season 19, Episode 8. We have the sit-down with Janelle and Cody. That was... Just where the action was at, oh, and I'm lit. so excited to talk about it. Me too. But before we do, we just have to tell you to please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. Mm -hmm. We have stupid opinions, um, and we're not going to apologize. No. <laughs> no time soon, honey. No. We stand by our dumb opinions. Yes, we do. So if you're sensitive, Beat. you might want to find yourself another dumpster. Mm -hmm. But if you're down to party and get into some real talk about some more mons, welcome to this dumpster. And if you are down to party with us, be sure to follow us on the Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon. <gasps> Patreon.com slash Reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party's at. All right. And if you are watching on YouTube, first of all, thank you. You're a real one. Thank you. You Legit. are. Real ones. We're at 4.1 um, subscribers oh, 4 already. 4.1. <laughs> 4.1. Wow. Woo! We have 4.1. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you so much for being here. We love you very much. We do. Please do not forget to like and comment. Did you like? Please like. And comment and share. All you have to do is hit that share and Just then copy, copy the link. It. You don't have to send it Please. to anybody. <laughs> but we'll know. So we thank will. you. Thank you. And also share. Subscribe. Subscribe. Oh my God, so many people who watch us. And why wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Actually, don't subscribe. I know. And that hurts me. Subscribe. It it's, hurts it Beatrice. It costs you nothing. Thank you. If you could do all of that for us, we would really appreciate it because thank it you. helps us in the algorithm. So yes. thank you in advance. Appreciate it. Should we say a word about the elections that have taken no. place in the United no. States <laughs> of America? <laughs> no. We are actually filming this on election on night. Tuesday night. Yeah. I have not watched any of the footage no. i don't subscribe uh -uh. to that bullshit okay the doom and gloom i don't buy into it no we are not a political podcast we're not we gonna not be it. speaking about it Period. all i'm here to say is are you okay yeah <laughs> is everybody okay the answer there? is no <laughs> Because I have no idea who's going to win this election. Girl, me neither. Um, by the time you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this on Maybe our podcast, we'll have a result. Are you feeling? Are you feeling all right? <laughs> I'm worried about everybody. Are Get in okay? this dumpster and let us hug you. Yeah, it's going to be all right. Let's just have fun, okay? We've got it on the vision board. Yeah, we're going to make it. It's going to be okay. Uh... All right, let's get into this episode Kay. entitled. Something about a, wolves? A wolf in sheep's clothing. Oh, who's that, do you think? Cody. Or David? Oh, my God. David. It's probably Cody, but it could be David. Maybe it's David. Who knows? Is he a wolf? A wolf in the sheets? Oh. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure, but that's what the title was. Yeah. We had some interesting things happen in this episode. Mm -hmm. We've got Christine open mouth kissing David at her front door. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> We Hi, have to hear baby. it again. Can we turn off the mics, please, baby. producers? I don't want to hear them kiss. Uh, We've got them with their dry mouth. Shopping for rings and stuff. We'll get there. Uh, We've got Mary and her carriage house. Nobody cares. Makeover for HGTV. Don't care. And then we have what we're really here to talk about, yeah. which is the conversation between Curly Q uh -huh. and Based Janelle. Yes. That was great. It was. I loved it. I Me loved too. every minute of it. Loved Get it. us started. Yeah. Well, we start with a dinner at Christine's house with David, where he's going to meet some of the kids for the first and time. And Tony. And Tony and McKelty. And McKelty talking about farts. <sighs> like, what, what and are we pooping. doing? I, Have you farted and pooped in front of each other? That's I real don't love. Understand. That's real connection. That's real intimacy. Again, we have Tony and McKelty auditioning for their own show or something. No one wants it. And I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. Sick of it, bitch. This whole I watched this episode twice and I zoned out during this whole scene. 
both times. Because we've already heard this. Yes, we already I don't care. heard Christine how you attacked David on your third date and compelled him to make out with you. We've already Great. heard about. Plus, you're already married. For real. All of these children have gone to your wedding, and we were there too. <sighs> oh, I'm just getting so annoyed. And I know TLC is dedicated to showing us this courtship, mm -hmm. but I couldn't be more uninterested. I mean, I really don't care. The only thing I cared about was Peyton kind of saying he has a problem with it he's like yeah would it matter if i had a problem with you guys being together and david tells him to his face the first time he's meeting this kid no it wouldn't matter because we're still going to be together mm -hmm. i'm like god damn yeah i mean i'm glad you're a nice guy and all and it seems like the kids have adjusted to you now but that's a audacious thing to it's say. It's a bit savage, yeah. but let's be real. He's following Christine's lead and I she's guess. been saying this entire time, like, yeah. I'm going to make out in front of my kids and I don't care. And Ew. if you don't like it, get over it, even if you're 12 years old, truly. Don't like it. Yeah, I know you don't. Really a lot annoying. of people don't like it. Yeah. And Christine even acknowledges that Peyton and I think Isabel are having a tougher time with David, but she's like, I don't care. Right. <laughs> They're just going to have to get used I know. to it. Like, ew, okay. Enjoy your um, yakisoba noodles or something that you make. Your what was noodles. that? A Hawaiian haystack? I don't know. Keeping in mind, I'm born and raised in Hawaii, uh, as yeah. was my father before me. Mm -hmm. um, we have nothing that even resembles <laughs> chow mein, dry chow mein noodles with chicken and soup and cheese and pineapple or something and almonds. Yikes. White people. But I mean, maybe it tastes great. I mean, maybe. <laughs> white people for real. <laughs> yes. As they say as a white person. Like, what did you think about Tony talking about farting and stuff? Like, these people have been together for like two months at this point. Yeah. I wasn't even acknowledging that I fart or poop in front of my husband at that time. <laughs> and I still don't. That. I never. Still no, do not. Ever. I hate that. I will not admit that I do that. Yeah. Much less ever do that in front never. of my husband. Husband. Well, some people maintain that that's like next level intimacy. Okay. That it's like you're really close to your partner. If you could be open like that in front of them, that's great for you. Yeah, no, it is actually great for you. If that really does signify intimacy in your relationship, could then I, I love that. I actually think that's great. I, I, I could never, never. I could never. And I just feel like Tony bringing it up is just him trying to grab the attention from everybody, make a stupid joke. And I'm like, Tony, you're not funny. Not funny you're at not all. intelligent. You're funny your hair looks terrible tonight. I don't know if anybody's <laughs> told you that. And McKelty, yeah. you're just as bad For trying real. to fire Avalon from whatever dumb job she has. I'm like, both of you need to leave. Nobody asked for you. Nobody. Nobody called you into the room. You can leave. You're so boring. I zone out every time you're on the TV. I hate them. <laughs> I hate them. I'm sick of them. <laughs> Me too. I like Aspen. Sure. I love Isabel. Yeah. I think Mitch seems great. He's yeah. just like, I got to show up for my wife just Totes. in case something goes left, but I'd really rather not be here. Yeah. And of course, Truly, who's still somewhat acting out, but like, who can blame her? I mean, honestly, her mom's making out with this old guy yeah. in front of her at every turn. Yep. Could I, ugh, I just can't and then we have like a weird segment with cody filming himself in his mac mcmansion it's his 55th birthday it's his 55th birthday I'm 55 today and he's having a change of heart i guess or he wants us to believe that he's having a change of heart because he's saying i'm just reflecting on my life and i just like really want to be a good dad again i just really want to care about my kids i had this dream that my five oldest would live like right down the street from me and come over all the time and, and now nobody talks to you then he breaks down like of course <laughs> yeah whatever and he says it wasn't because of polygamy it was because i actually authentically enjoyed my family mm -hmm. what happened uh, yeah I, I don't believe that what happened um, i do believe that i think that in the earlier seasons with cody and his kids he did seem to enjoy his children he did seem to be all about f family. So I am i don't know what changed around the time of COVID. Look, my thing is words don't mean shit if you can't back it up with your actions. So you can say all this stuff like right. you miss your family and you want to be a good dad, but you're not making the effort to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Maddie still doesn't talk to you. Mm -hmm. Some of these other older kids still don't talk to you. Most and have of a them, I think. With Most it, of with them you. do not. So you're recording this. I don't know when. And you want us to believe that you're having this change of heart, but it doesn't mean shit. 
It's January of 2023 because he's a Capricorn, right? I guess. It's a Capricorn. So it's after the holidays and it's 2023. Mm -hmm. So it's not even this current year. It's last year. It's certainly before anything has happened with Garrison. But if we are to believe Cody, then he is maybe exiting his rage, his season of rage and red pill and entering into this, oh, fuck, season of what have I done? My entire mm. family has been destroyed and my intention, my vision board, <laughs> I, I want to to bring my family back t- together. Wow. But like, yeah, that's great. But you drove this into a ditch. Mm-hmm. How are you going to get us out of the ditch on the way to Nauvoo, honey? Exactly. Like, how are you going to fix exactly. it? Like, what's your plan? And that's why I don't like even listening to him talk or seeing his face. Yeah. Because he says a lot of <laughs> shit. Yeah. Right? A lot of sound and fury signifying absolutely nothing. Yeah. Like, it's okay that you feel sad and disappointed and racked with guilt. But what are you, what's the action plan? What are you going to do about it? He's got nothing to say to that except for his wives betrayed him. Exactly. And his kids betrayed him. And Maddie's jealous and a gossip. Yeah. This is why I say words don't mean shit mm-hmm. because you're not doing what Robin told you to do in that fake fight scene from two episodes ago where she said you need to camp out on your kids' doorsteps and make the effort that you can to get in their good graces. So... Yeah, you want to be a good dad again. You want to be the hero of your kids' stories Mm -hmm. for you. But you're not, and you're not making any actionable change. Mm -hmm. So miss me with that. I don't give a shit if you cry. I mean, you're just lying, and you're you're being deceitful, and also you're just performing for the camera. Exactly. I mean, later on in this episode, we've got you sitting down with Janelle talking about, like, I don't understand why the kids hate me now. Don't get me started on that. I mean, I know I'm jumping ahead, but I'm like, okay, so which is it? Like, you know you destroyed your family and that you want to repair it. Or that your kids are just acting out and you have no idea why. Exactly. He's smart enough to know that people think he's a bad dad. So he's going to make this Mm -hmm. self-filmed thing about, yeah, I want to be a good dad again. I like really want to work on my kids' relationships with and blah, 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 blah. But then in the same breath, you're talking to Janelle about how Maddie's a gossip. Right. And jealous of you and Robin for some reason. Right. So shut the fuck up. Absolutely. He's full of shit. He is. He's terrible. Yep. He's infuriating. 100%. And I hate him. Me too. I hate and then we have um christine and uh, david going ring shopping and picking out their custom rings and I'm a so boring i'm happy for you christine Me too. i love that you have a man who can take you to the jewelry store sure. and buy you a beautiful marquee diamond yeah. and your weird interwoven black Black and gold and Black platinum. Black and gold and edgy metals so and stuff edgy. like that. I'm very happy for you. So edgy. What did you think of the ring, though? Ugly. Did you think it was ugly? Oh, so ugly. Everything about it. I mean, <laughs> no offense. <laughs> no, <laughs> no offense whatsoever, but it was I mean, so ugly. I'm literally Dreadful. like Janelle where I have a gold band. Me too. Like, I don't give a shit about that kind of stuff. I have my own, like, style. If I were to pick something like that, and it's not that. <laughs> I wouldn't even pick a diamond Mm, because that's an inflated industry and also sourced in a terrible way. I would pick something probably lab grown or just a beautiful gemstone from my mother or something like that. I would repurpose something, but whatever. I'm not here to judge Christine. She seems so happy. She seems very happy. I actually love that David is taking care of her and wants to give her nice things. She truly deserves this. For sure. I was interested though to hear Janelle say like I would just rock a gold band I would get married on a mountain honey in my jeans like you that's right exactly like me exactly not a lot of pomp and circumstance Mm -hmm. and then we cut to Mary and she's talking about liking a square cut Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day not really being ready to even think about that because she's single and that's weird super weird Mm -hmm. I feel like Mary's probably not going to remarry anybody or like really? maybe she'll date around, but I don't think she's going to be happy with that personally. No, why? I don't know. I think she just is kind of weirded out by the fact that she's 50 something and single and she was married to a guy for 30 something years. Like that's a lot. Yeah. And also famous. Yeah. And after Amos, famous Amos. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm wondering, I, I don't really remember why that relationship fell apart other than the raccoons. The forensic investigation into Amos Mm -hmm. like did seem to suggest that he was a clout goblin and he was after her and that he had a lot of weird shit in his past. And so she dumped him. And so if I were her, I would be leery about who I dated and who wanted to date me. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But 
Anyway, so they selected their rings and they're getting married, bitch. That's great. I'm happy for you. I just don't want to see it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're going to, though. We're here and we're I seeing know. it. We're going to see the Gotta entirety of it. it. Be here it. now. <sighs> okay, fine. Buddha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God. <laughs> then we have Mary with her carriage house thing. Yeah. Let's get into it. We've got Jen showing up and that gay guy who's the decorator. <laughs> gay guy. Right? Yeah, no, I mean, for sure. He's a yeah. gay guy. Turbo um, gay. And it's her birthday. She too is a Capricorn, I do believe, uh-huh. which makes a lot of sense for 100%. her business acumen. Yep. And so she is getting the big reveal and mm-hmm. it looks great. Yeah, I guess the friends renovated her carriage house for her, so it looks good. Yes, and so now she can conduct her predatory business practices mm-hmm. selling uh, low-budget, terrible fashion to women who want to buy it for yeah. some reason. <laughs> Plus she has upstairs with a gym an exercise room she and a has lost pole. weight yep she's been working out or something yep. or the ozempic of course mm-hmm. yeah and that's great i'm happy for her the carriage house looked fine it was cool i'm just bored yeah okay <laughs> i'm so bored yes but we're happy for mary we're yes. happy and she does talk about her independence sure and how she has been alone for a very long time no, that's sad. and she acknowledges that her and Cody have been struggling for years and then they cut to that scene from when Mary was asking for money to buy the B&B Yikes. and Janelle's like, absolutely not. Yep. And Cody's like, uh, maybe in 17 years you yeah, might be ready to do that for you. And she's oh. like, okay, well, I'm just going to go and hustle and have a sale and make $40,000. I'll pay for that shit by myself, and she which did. she did and proceeded to live in that way confidently yeah. for the subsequent years. And I mean, she's a bad bitch for that. For sure. Yes. And I love that about Mary. I think she's a really cool person with that. And I'm glad that she has her own little space. She talks about making her own table. Like, whoever wants to sit at my table mm-hmm. is welcome. And I'm like, you know what? Great. Yes. Hashtag worthy up. I'm yes. happy for Found you. Found a family. That's great. Right. Have fun with your gay best friend. But you're bored. And I'm bored. Okay. Got it. Got it. (laughs) Moving on now. The most entertaining part of the whole episode was Janelle and Cody going to lunch. Without a doubt. I mean, this was like the bulk of everything. Yes. So let's get there. Yes. So we're at Josephine's Bistro in Mm -hmm. the attic, which is, I think, the same restaurant that Christine took Janelle and her weird friends to last season. Yeah. And Janelle was just like, get me the fuck out of here with these women. Um, but she goes there to meet Cody. She arrives on time. Mm-hmm. Looking fab. I thought she looked great, I thought honey. she looked great. And it was like she wasn't even trying to. Uh-uh. She had her hair up in a clip. She was yep. wearing a little vest. She looked like a mountaineer. Yep. She looked great. And here comes Cody prancing and dancing his way into that room. <laughs> his curls bouncing his around. curls just bouncing. Just oh like, my oh my God, God hi. <laughs> He's like, wow, this is intimate. So intimate for you and so me. So close. And I need J- your money, though. Janelle is just like the fuck's going on here Mm. doesn't make any sense cody is so hoping he can wrap her around his little finger again and manipulate her into giving them more money because he's seen the writing on the wall mary's gone Mm -hmm. christine's been gone now it's just janelle and even though he doesn't give a shit about janelle they haven't seen each other in forever is what janelle says right two years i mean the fuck so let's talk about that okay yeah. because it was i think the day after cody's birthday mm-hmm. and i think janelle or he says it's like almost february of 2023 mm-hmm. and so the big fight at christmas between cody and janelle was december of 2020. 2021 i think yeah so are you telling me then mm-hmm that Cody didn't visit her or Savannah in the dormitory apartment. Yes. And that also puts us into the RV as well. Yeah. We already know he wasn't showing up during COVID to the rental that she and the boys and Savannah were living in. So he didn't go to the rental. Yeah. He didn't go to the RV and he didn't go to the dormitory apartment. She hasn't seen him in two years in her space. Yes. But in this scene, it's like, well, I was hoping we could reconcile a little bit. Were you? No, because in his talking head, he says that that was a bullshit pipe dream. He says, from both of them. I'm like, Janelle was not wanting yeah, to reconcile She didn't show up to all. reconcile. She wants her money. Run her, her money. You were wanting it. This is Cody's MO, though. Like, he can't take the sole blame for literally anything. He has to rope other people into it at all times. It's not my fault the marriage has ended. It's all of our faults right it's not me wanting to reconcile with janelle it's both of us it's Mm -hmm. a bullshit pipe dream from both of us like she literally doesn't want to reconcile with you at all no you bring it up at this lunch and she's like 
bitch, what? We've had all these conversations. I don't want to be married to you. I mean, Janelle goes right into the conversation, getting right to the point. She's like, what are we doing with the land? Yeah. Are you going to buy me out? Or are we going to finance this? What is happening? And Cody just kind of titters and he giggles. And he's like, oh, my God, you're skipping right to the end. What about you and me? What about reconciliation? And this is that great scene where Janelle's just kind of, she seems dumbstruck. And she's like, like, "Um, we don't even exist in the same universe. Not at all. Not at all. And she's there for business because the weird loan that they have is up in like three months. And Cody straight up tries to deflect and he's like, well, no, we got many months. Yeah. She's like, no, we've got like three months. Right. (laughs) We need to figure out what the fuck we're doing. And as she said, uh, not last episode, but the episode before that, she's got the money to pay her half of this property Mm -hmm. ready to go. It's Cody that doesn't have the money. Yep. It's Cody that's holding this whole thing up. And he seems to take a little perverse bit of joy by not talking to her about it I know. by holding this over her head by not mm-hmm. giving her information and frankly Janelle you're stuck because you made the choice to go on go in on this piece of property with Cody and this is the man you married oh, and now yeah. this is the man you're stuck with well and he says in his talking head that he thinks Janelle thinks he will screw her because he says Janelle likes to screw him over Mm -hmm. which is so wild but i'm like in this moment you're trying to screw her over though like you don't want to talk about anything about buying her out about getting her out of the land he asks her about building on it and she's like well i don't know if i can even do that independently i'd have to be calling you a lot can we yeah can we talk about that because she says i would prefer to get the money but if i am going to get the land then i will definitely build on the the hill yikes and he's like yeah but if you build you're going to be calling me up every week and she's like yeah that's a problem I won't be able to do that independently I'm like what is he talking about I don't know what in the world would Janelle be calling him for every week if she built a house for his help with the house for money maybe like, well because his name is on the part of the land so he might have to be involved in some of the decisions like with some of the contractors and stuff like that mm. so maybe that's what it is but then Cody says something really fucked up in his talking head where he says if Janelle decides to build on the property then that leaves me to be free because me and robin will be like oh well there's an ex-wife on there we won't be interested in it right so i'm like you want janelle to take over all of the land like that's what he's saying right now it's him and robin's names on on everything right with janelle's name on one and mary's name on the other is robin's name on janelle and cody's plot as well i think so Okay. Maybe it's Cody and him, but Robin's name is on a couple of those yes, plots. Yes, definitely, yes. I, so I, I don't know if he thinks that maybe Janelle will take over the property and he's like, oh, I'll be free. Like we all of the plots? Of the, I don't know. Okay. He's fucking delusional. Right. He just doesn't want to be responsible for this land. He's not going to build on it. He, I honestly think it's just, he says whatever comes to the mi- into his mind in the moment. I don't even know if he knows what he's saying. He's like, Delude. yeah, well, if she decides to build then that gives me permission to just get out of the area i'm like are you talking about flagstaff like what are you you talking about this particular area around coyote pass like what are you even speaking about and wasn't robin just talking a couple of episodes ago or last episode about how she still has hope for janelle to be in the family and like she really wants her to actually build and she would love for mary to do that like what is actually true and what is false you can't take anything he has to say at face value no not at all It's all just a mess. And I feel bad for Janelle because she's stuck in this. I know she chose to you know put her name on all of this shit and then she chose to pay it off with him i know i would i would have i don't know honey i would have compelled the sale we're going to have to sell i do not want to be a co-owner with you in this property no way anymore no way either buy me out or we're gonna have to sell it yeah but he doesn't want to do anything with it so i would love to know what's happening with the land right now because she's obviously not going to build on it mm-hmm. she just built or just bought a fucking farm in north carolina right. and they're gonna make a flower farm and so I'm like, i believe what are we doing? she relocated her life to north carolina yeah. which she actually tells cody in this conversation she's yeah. like you know i would love to be around maddie and i'd love to be around the kids and i would probably just relocate and this is the door opening for cody mm-hmm. to say well how come maddie didn't tell me that she was pregnant 
This is not what we're here to talk about, Cody. No, it's not. And anytime we try to talk about relationships or the things that have gone right, you shut down that conversation immediately because all of it is centered around Robin and you will not brook any conversation about Robin. But you want to ask about Maddie? I know. So wild. And Janelle knows in the back of her mind, she says this in her talking head, like Maddie told me he hasn't seen her since Evie was born, and Evie's three. So it's been three years he hasn't been involved in mm-hmm. Evie's life. What makes you think he's going to be involved in this new baby's life? He she, won't be, he, and he, he wasn't. He doesn't give a shit. And he tries to pry it out of Janelle, and Janelle's like, no, don't put me in the middle. Right, like, she's like, there's a lot of nuances here, yep. and I don't want to be in the middle. And then he says, jealousy and spite, gossip. or jealousy and gossip. Yep. It's because of jealousy and gossip. And she says, no, there's more to it than that. So gross. He's so out of touch. Jealous of what? Your McMansion? What would Maddie be jealous of? Maddie has her own relationship, just like you do, Cody. Maddie has her own children, just like you do. Maddie has her own career, and she's successful, which you are not. So what exactly is she jealous of? Unless it's Robin, unless it's the fact that you funneled all of this money into the McMansion and into the LLC and stolen from her mother. That's not jealousy. That's being irate that you've stolen from Janelle. Oh, for sure. Jealous of what? In his his mind i think he thinks maddie's jealous of all of the attention he gives robin and, and her kids because that's what cody's been saying for the last couple of years like they're just jealous because i have a really sweet relationship with them i love robin differently blah 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 i'm involved with them because we have a sweet experience we have a good experience mm-hmm. that's what he thinks it is he or is it's delusional. covid like he keeps mentioning covid too, he's like because she says kind of at the top of their conversation like we're just so different mm-hmm. i mean you're very selfish <laughs> and self-absorbed she's like i'm independent and you're a selfish fucking asshole so good. it was just like so oh good. my god and he's like oh only in the last two years yeah and she's like no it was before covid that you were not seeing our kids and that yeah. you were being unfair that this was not equitable and he yeah. can't hear it he can't hear anything no he really can't no you can't say anything to him that he will receive no so okay. why are you there janelle well she leaves and i'm jumping ahead again but she's like yeah i gotta get a lawyer because there's right. no talking to this fool i know and does she end up lawyering up i don't remember i don't is. know that's I don't what know. i want to know i would love to know i don't did. think there's an active lawsuit no but, but maybe again have. there have been rumors that he made a payout to janelle right the last couple of years um, to pay her back for what she put down on the McMansion. But I don't. that's unsubstantiated. That's yeah. rumor mill. I have no idea. Maybe they have a mediator. Maybe they don't have a lawyer, but maybe they have somebody. The attorney that she's recommending. Mm-hmm. She's like, all we want to do is just sit down, you and me. Let's go over the contract. Because apparently the contract that they signed to purchase Coyote Pass was stupid. It was a dumb financial decision. Duh. What a shock. Yeah. So she's like, let's sit down in front of this lawyer who knows who we both are. Mm -hmm. And let's have him look at everything and come up with a game plan. But Cody, by the time they leave, though, Cody's like, so yeah, let's get this other information and then we can call the lawyer. Right. What other information? No, it's just bullshit. He just wants to prolong it. He likes to keep Janelle on a string. Mm -hmm. This is part of his abuse, I think. It's just him saying a bunch of crap fluffing up their feathers and not doing anything about it Mm -hmm. because he can't be bothered he's too busy siphoning all this money moving shit around behind the scenes to worry or care about anybody else's situation that he put them in but like in this moment in february of 2023 with three months out uh, of having to pay off this balloon loan which is what janelle calls it is he really willing to like do nothing and walk away from the nine hundred thousand dollar payment they made for coyote pass just to spite her probably yeah okay that's yeah. wild but please tell us that you think janelle's got a victim card that she's right. playing all the time please tell us that janelle's the one that wants all the power because she wants to take it from you mm-hmm. shut the fuck up dude yeah and that all revolves around robin because mm-hmm. janelle does try to bring up the fact that the kids are upset about robin yes and that we can't even talk to you like this is an issue for us and, and i understand cody that you don't think it's a valid issue but it's a legitimate issue for us it's a legitimate issue for our kids yeah and we would like to talk to you about it 
And as soon as Janelle tries to do that, he shuts that shit down. She even mentions the conversation that she had with Robin. I don't know when Robin was going to buy the McMansion. And we yes. learned about this last season or the, the season before that as well. Janelle actually mentioned it then, mm -hmm. which is what gives Robin the ammo to talk about it in her talking head in this episode. But by the way, Janelle mentions it. She and Robin had a conversation in which Janelle implored her, please don't buy, please don't buy the McMansion if it's going to drain us of our resources, because I really want to get out on Coyote Pass. That's what the vision is. So please, can you make sure that you don't do that? And for some reason, Cody comes to Janelle on her birthday and says, I heard that you said this to Robin and that you were mean to her and that you gave her a hard time. And so Janelle at that point puts two and two together and says, oh, okay, so they're talking mm -hmm. about everybody behind the scenes. And Robin ran back to Cody from this conversation, which was actually amiable, yeah. according to Janelle, in which they both seemingly agreed and painted it like Janelle was being antagonistic. Yeah, and then Robin says in her talking head this week that mm -hmm. it was an amiable conversation, that they actually agreed mm -hmm. on this issue. And Robin just went to Cody to inform him of this conversation. And now she's getting blamed on the back end for the choices that Cody makes. And this is where Robin talks about how there's this new concept that I'm a puppet master and I mm -hmm. put all these spells around Cody and that I'm blamed for the choices he makes, which is so ridiculous. Ha 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 ha. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if do she mean? if she's saying if what she's saying is true that this conversation was amiable and she was just informing Cody of this mm -hmm. maybe it did piss Cody off maybe Cody was like oh fuck Janelle bitch right. I want this fucking McMansion right. I want the heated driveway I want this fancy beautiful life with my favorite wife Robin so mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to Janelle and blame it on Robin mm -hmm. like people have talked about how Cody loves triangulation and mm -hmm. loves doing all of this with everybody. So I could see a world where maybe mm -hmm. that conversation wasn't necessarily bad. But I could also see Robin spinning it to Cody. I 100% you know I mean? think she spun it. I think in the moment with Janelle, who I think intimidates Robin, totally. honestly, I think she was like, oh, no, absolutely. I don't want to drain the resources of the family. I would never do that. And then goes back to Cody. And she's like, yeah, Janelle confronted me. And she has a real problem with us buying this house. But I thought that you wanted to buy me a house with enough mm -hmm. bedrooms for all of our kids. I thought that was the plan. Because if you recall, at the time that she was purchasing the home, she was on a campaign for the viewers to believe that she didn't want it. She would prefer to rent. Right, 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 I want right. to rent. I don't want to tie up all of the family's money in sure. this $1 million home. I would never want that. We saw through it then mm -hmm. and I see through it now. I yeah. absolutely think that Robin threw Janelle under the bus, which got Cody agitated. He went back to Janelle and now Janelle's like, okay, I can't trust you mm -mm. as a sister wife. No, Like not you're not actually here for the family. You're here for yourself. Yep. This is where Janelle calls Robin Cody's sacred cow. Mm -hmm. And Cody gets triggered by this. He's like, no, 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 we're not going to talk about this. Like, he doesn't even want to bring it up. Mm -hmm. This is just proves Janelle's point yeah. of like, we can't fucking talk to you about anything, especially Robin, mm -hmm. because you will shut it down. So fuck off, dude, with your self-centered right. bullshit. Well, it's interesting because he wants to talk about the potential to reconcile in this conversation. And so then Janelle kind of shifts because, again, she came in talking about property mm -hmm. and she starts talking about the issues that are the most important and germane, i.e. Robin and how I can't talk to you about it because there are sacred cows and on the couch. She's like, I mean, how do I exist in a polygamist relationship with this man when he worships? He literally worships this woman. There's no space for me. It's not equal for my kids. And so she's actually trying to have the conversation with him. Yeah. And he is fundamentally unable to do it. And so then she's like, OK, well, then let's not talk about it. Yeah. Let's not even try to have the reconciliation conversation, because if you can't hear me talk about my emotions and my feelings, then there's nowhere to go. And then he's like, I'm willing to listen to your emotions and your feelings. There are no sacred cows. What? What? She just tried to talk. It just one minute previously, mm -hmm. she was trying to talk to you about her emotions and feelings around Robin. But because it's around Robin, and because it is indefensible, yep. you cannot defend this behavior. You don't want to talk about it. Oh yeah, it's super oh, turbo manipulative. It's so fucking frustrating. And I think he even says something like, "No, everything was equal. Like, no, we had." 
like a balance. It was fine. Like there was no um, inequity here with anybody, with any of the wives. And Ro- and Janelle's like, okay. Yeah. Like, shut up. I'm not going to waste my I'm breath. I'm literally telling you how I didn't feel important enough to you. And you're saying, no, no, it was equal. Okay. Dululu. Well, he seemed to concede that it wasn't equal during COVID. And he seemed Only to try that. and blame the kids being upset with him and thinking he's evil or something on COVID and his inability to show up um, to, to visit his children during that time. I think it's like six or seven or eight months that he did not visit Gabe and mm-hmm. Garrison and Savannah, et cetera. So he's trying to pin it on behavior that happened in COVID. Whatever. And again, Janelle's just like, no, m- my guy, this happened well before that. The kids have been pissed off at you. And he just doesn't get it. No. And this is the whole concept of pearls before swine. Like, stop Mm. wasting your precious life energy, your chi, on absolutely dreadful, deplorable people. Yes. Stop trying to reason with somebody who is intentionally misunderstanding you and mis characterizing you so that they can gain an advantage no fuck that yeah leave josephine's bistro as she did yep. and hire you an attorney oh so good hire I an love attorney. janelle for this too i love how she was just a boss bitch during mm-hmm. this whole entire thing she's trying to speak up for herself she's trying to combat cody's bullshit she does pretty well yeah and i think cody was a little flustered by it honestly mm-hmm. i think he wasn't expecting her to just be like no we're not gonna reconcile fuck you you're a self-centered piece of shit bye i'm Mm -hmm. gonna get a lawyer Mm -hmm. i don't think he was expecting that and i love it i love to see it i love it too i wanted to ask you specifically beatrice about the statement that she made to cody in which she mentioned like i mean i'm sitting with you now and i can feel it like there's an energy Mm -hmm. here and i can feel that little hook in me Mm -hmm. which led me to believe as i was watching them and even the way that cody was talking to her and, and like the softness on his face i do think I think he's saying he doesn't love her and that she's out to get him and that she's betrayed him because by the time he's saying that on the couch in his interstitial, she's already rejected him. But in this moment, I think if she was open to the idea of reconciliation and if she was open to saying, I love you, I think he would have been right there. I actually think he has great affection for Janelle and he mentions trying to start their love affair again he's like we can't use the property in order to leverage that that wouldn't be fair but like i think he's hearkening back in his mind beneath um those curly cues and (laughs) under all that baldness he's thinking about (laughs) las vegas and their renaissance bitch when they were having sex day in and day out and he was loving all up on janelle's Mm -hmm. body yada yada and he's like i could go back there janelle i could i could go back there with you could you go back there with me and her cold dead blue eyes and she's like you're in a different universe it's a demonic universe yeah you are fucking evil absolutely not look i think two things can be true at once i feel like he could be happy with her and i feel like he could give her that sweet sweet love until the end of his days Mm -hmm. but i think he could only do that because he also gets a benefit out of it he gets the finances right he get he wants to reconcile with her purely for that in my opinion. Mm. I think that there is like a little bit of a twinge. Like I feel like they did have chemistry. I feel like Janelle was like the one wife that like left, came back to him a couple times. And I think he admires her for that. I think they had like a special connection when they were like camping and going on adventures together and they were holding hands. Like we saw that in Vegas. They have something or they had Mm -hmm. something. But I think purely right now, He's like, yeah, no, I could totally have a love affair with you because I really need your money. That's what I think. I don't know. I'd love to hear what y'all think. I mean, you can write to Beatrice on the Instagram or you can drop on YouTube. You can leave us a comment. I just, I feel something there. And when I look at their pictures when they were married and when they were younger, I don't know. I just feel like there's some sexual chemistry and that's i think what janelle is referencing when she's like i still feel that tug i feel that hook in me yeah and she i think if he wasn't such a fuck stick to her kids yeah if it hadn't become so egregious because she buried a lot of that he has been a fuck stick fuck stick for a while which Mm -hmm. she tells him literally but if he hadn't gotten so egregious with it she would have been able to stay with him because she does have that feeling for him and he has it for her, I think. Oh, for sure. You said this last season when you you were wondering if Janelle was going to leave him and you were like, the only way she'd leave him is if he fucked around with her kids. And he Mm -hmm. did and she left him. Mm -hmm. So you were right. 
that's totally like her mm-hmm. end all be all. And she even says it this episode. She's like, if I have to choose between you and my kids, I'm going to choose the kids, dude. Every single time. Peace out. Yep. I don't need you at all. Mm-hmm. Biatch. And she's like, I'm happy. I'm yep. like living my life. Like I would be so hard pressed to even think about a life where I would have to commingle that shit with you For living on Coyote real. Pass with all of those um, prairie dogs with leprosy. <laughs> Seriously. And your bum ass, bitch ass, breakdancing, diesel jeans wearing bitch of a <laughs> wife she is <laughs> for real yes she also mentions the possibility of getting a release yes which <gasps> i was like Let's talk about yes, that because honey. is it me did i recall that she said a few episodes ago like i don't need that i realized mary is getting a release and christina's just moved on but i just don't think i need to do that she said she felt like she didn't need to right. but she still believes in the faith and so that makes me wonder if that talking head where she was like, I don't feel like I need to was filmed after these scenes. Mm-hmm. I Because I could see that. Because maybe she's like, yeah, I mean, like, I believe. But, like, also, I just don't fucking care. Like, I haven't been a part of this church mm-hmm. for a while. Like, it's whatever. I'm good. I'm Gucci. I'm cool. Yeah, but she tries to bring it up to Cody. She's like, mm-hmm. you know, I still do have, like, the spiritual beliefs. feelings and convictions around my faith. And he's mm-hmm. like, oh, come on, drop the bullshit. Mm-hmm. Which I thought was so interesting because I think that really shined a light on his faith and his walk at this time. He's just like over it. He's totally He thinks it's all bullshit. But Janelle and Mary are the two lone holdouts Mm -hmm. who still have that faith. I'm wondering about Robin because she says all she has is her prayer. No, she doesn't care about it. And she's got her faith. But like we know that her kids now go to an evangelical assemblies Mm -hmm. of God kind of church. I wonder what Robin is doing and thinking and how she's feeling in her faith. Look, I think Robin was kind of the catalyst for Cody losing his faith. Mm -hmm. I think everything that he says about how polygamy is not fair to women or men and how you have to marry people not out of love and blah 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 i think all that came from robin i think she planted the seed and he realized oh shit yeah i don't actually care about any of these women i only care about you and your Mm -hmm. breakdancing pussy so Mm -hmm. maybe i don't believe in this faith anymore so i think that's you know cody's side of things but i loved janelle talking about their faith and the release and how she's like yeah in our culture, Cody's a total fucking failure. <laughs> <gasps> that was so good. Oh, that my was God. So I was trying to remote view right oh. into Cody Brown's living room oh. where he's watching this and seeing her so say that right. because it is a narcissistic injury. And she was it, laughing. She was laughing. And it was an ego Ooh. wound because he is a fucking failure. Yep. And she does talk about his ego. She's mm-hmm. like, he only wants to reconcile because of yeah. his ego. There's no emotions behind what all. he's asking for. It's totally his ego and uh. the finances. So. But because he cannot get what he wants from Janelle, yep. he is not willing to give her information. He's not willing to help her in any way. He's going to take his sweet fucking curly cute time. Yep. And again, that's when we have Janelle saying, okay, well, you know, we can talk to the attorney whenever. But then to the camera, she's like, I got to get a lawyer. Yes. I think she probably did get a lawyer. I think, I think so that's the only reason she's meeting with Mary in next week's episode mm-hmm. is to talk about maybe teaming up to go after him for finances i don't know i would love to see that i would love it so much i would love that so very much yep um but i think she probably did get a lawyer because she's talking about it here and i think that they may be settled and i think the rumor that he gave her 130 140 thousand dollars out of and had to take a heloc loan in order to do that i think it's probably true i love it and then, of course, Nikki Haverstock saying that some realtor reached out to her and said that there are multiple loans taken against the McMansion. So even though they're selling it mm-hmm. for more than they even listed it for, that shit was leveraged to the hilt. Yep. I love to see it. Mm-hmm. I hope they go fucking down. <laughs> and so, yeah, in next week's episode, we have Mary and Janelle talking about Janelle's marriage ending, which is interesting. I love to see it. Mm-hmm. We have Christine introducing David to uh, janelle's kids and janelle's kind of like yeah it's a little fast it's a little weird (laughs) but good for you christine i guess and then cody meeting david at gwendolyn's engagement party i can't wait i'm sure cody's got something to say about david and his bald head we'll see we'll see i bet he'll be i bet it'll be all right and everybody will be mature and conduct I themselves accordingly i have no idea it. now i do want to say that last week and this week i think we got 
six or seven people who called in on the speak pipe so many. to sound off and give us their opinions on Cody Brown, on the show, on what's going on with Christine and that open mouth kissing. <laughs> um, but it was too many to actually so many. cover in this episode. We're doing an entirely second, a separate second episode. Yep. We'll probably drop it uh, within a day. Something like that. So after this episode, but it's coming up this week. Yeah. So make sure that you check that out because, of course, the raccoons that exist in the stumpster yeah. are not only the most beautiful and corpulent raccoons, but they're the smartest raccoons. They are the smartest. They got shit to say. They do got a lot of shit to and say. And so we're going to listen to them yeah. and we're going to talk about it. So yes. make sure you look for that additional podcast episode or video. And Beatrice, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here? Ah, well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope and plead to the Mormon God on Kolob that you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review. It really five. helps us grow the pod so we can get fatter up in here. Oh my God, we do need to get fatter. I'm super skinny. You're wasting away. I know. Somebody should call 911. <laughs> We will I shouldn't be, say that. What, <laughs> 5150? Good. Were you going to say 5150? Yeah. <gasps> um, we will kidding. be back later this week to talk about your burning questions. And we'll be back next week to talk sister wives. Until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And 